Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Lee Pitts Live. We're so happy to come to you from McGregor Clinic, and I hope that you are happy as well. You should be thrilled because we've got a golden apple winner here, Louis Fisher. Let me bump you in. The music teacher, director, and everything else at Gateway High School. I must start off by saying, my friend, I said golden apple winner, but me, it's golden apple earner. You earn that golden apple. That was not a lottery. That was not a game of chance. It was from your skills, your expertise, and your work, and the students, and everybody recognized it, and you earned it. How does that sound? That's, that, sound that sounds wonderful, and it sounds about accurate, too. That's right. Every time I interview golden apple earners, I make that little speech so people understand you have to get out there and do things that people recognize and you can pass that on to the students, right? Absolutely. Um, one, of, one of the things about um, earning a golden apple is, and I'm, and I'm glad you said that because the six of us, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't win it. Um, we earned it and we were selected to represent the, uh, the best of the best of educators in here in Lee County. That's outstanding. We're so proud of you and what you were able to accomplish in earning your golden apple. We'll hold it up right here. It's a pretty nice little weight on there. Lewis Fisher, golden apple 2023. Talk about your background. We see you now at the top of the rung with one of Lee County's highest awards. Where did you come from? How did you get into education? All right, um, I'm originally from Pompano Beach, Florida, so uh, right over here in Broward County. Um, went to the University of North Alabama. Uh, attended there for a couple of years before I joined the Air Force. Uh, spent about 11 years in the Air Force, you know, gaining a family and all of that. Uh, got out in uh, 2005, went back to, went back to school at University of North Alabama to earn my bachelor's in instrumental music. Uh, a couple of years later, moved up to Nashville and went to Trevecca Nazarene University, got my master's of arts in teaching, and from there went out to Arizona to start my teaching career. And I was out there for eight years before coming back to Florida. Uh, now back here in Lee County, I got back here in uh, 2019. Uh, spent one year at East Lee County High School before uh, being selected uh, to open up Gateway High School and establish its music program. Over there with my good friend, Principal Nikki. Yes. Shouting you out, Nikki Watson. Yep. Nikita Watson. Uh, she does a great job over there. Absolutely. She? Absolutely she does. The, what has been the response locally, particularly at Gateway High, when they know that one of their teachers is a golden apple, from the administration down to the students? I, I received an overwhelming showering of love. Um, much to my surprise, um, I, I was not expecting to, to be selected as a Golden Apple recipient. Um, when, when they came in and uh, uh, presented me with the Golden Apple, um, it was a lot of my band students, some of my orchestra students, um, even some of the students from the uh, art classes, which were right next door, uh, came over mm. to uh, he help celebrate with me. Um, and, and I just received an overwhelming showering of love from the entire Gateway community. Uh, well, from Lee County all around. I mean, it's, it's been one big celebration yes. ever since. Galas uh, and retreats yeah, and everything yeah. since then. Yep, just got back from a, a collegium uh, over in Captiva, spent last week out there. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been a wonderful ride. Um, uh, definitely not expected. Um, definitely did not expect everything that came along with it. But I'm, I'm happy to be on the ride. I said at the outset that you were a music teacher, instructor, but I want you to expand on what I just said. All right. Um, actually, I'm the uh, director of instrumental music at Gateway High School, which means I'm, I'm in charge of the band program, uh, the newly, newly established orchestra program, and I teach a general music, a general music class. So I, I have everything from beginning band all the way through um, our top wind ensemble, 
um, as well as our marching band and um, auxiliary. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically that pretty much sums it up. You talked about you got your, you were a music major in school. Yes. Prior to that, when did you first start picking up instruments like Prince or somebody? <laughs> because I think about you guys who are like the music directors. Now you have to know about all those instruments. So you got like this catalog of music in some, some crate well, somewhere. <laughs> not, not really. Um, well, first of all, let me, let me dispel a myth right now. A lot of people think that uh, us as music educators, we know how to play every instrument. That is not true. Okay. <laughs> there are a select few of us out there that actually can do that, mm -hmm. but for the most part, we have, we have our specialized instruments that we play. Mine is uh, bass, trombone, and tuba. Um, but going back, um, I started in music as far as me playing music uh, when I was in the fourth grade okay. on a violin early in the elementary school music mm -hmm. program. Uh, then I started playing trombone in uh, middle school, uh, picked up tuba in my seventh grade year, and then it just it just went on from Were there. Were you one of those children that the parents had to drag to music lessons or force you? No. Or you, you, you loved it all the time? Um, it's, it's been a love of mine pretty much since birth. Um, my dad uh, used to be a radio personality in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Worked, he was a disc jockey uh, for WRBD in uh, Fort Lauderdale, uh, AM radio station. Um, but then from, from that, ever since I had an instrument in my hand, I just, I just fell in love with it. Um, I never had a private lesson until I got to college. So it was, it was just all of you know, me in a practice room, mm -hmm. uh, just being, being a music student. You said something earlier that I want to go back to. You said that, and, I, and I'm, I'm one of them who figured that if you teach music, you play all the instruments. Mm -hmm. How does one, in a Sesame Street way, explain this to me, how does one teach others to play an instrument that they don't play? Well, through college, um, as part of uh, my degree program, uh, we do have to take classes on the different types of instruments, um, whether it's in groups of families, woodwind and brass and percussion. Um, through our class, our woodwind class, we get to experiment with all of the basic uh, woodwind instruments. Uh, we play some of them for a little bit. Uh, but then, you know, just getting used to it, mm -hmm. uh, getting an understanding of the instrument. Um, same with class percussion, uh, same deal. So once, and once you go through all of that, um, and, I, and I forgot about piano as well, we, ask, we have to take piano classes as mm -hmm. well. Once you go through a semester of that, you have a general idea you have the of fundamentals. The, the, the fundamentals of the, you know, the characteristics of the instruments, um, how to get a student started okay. on, on the instrument. Um, and, and a key part to it is also knowing your limitations. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, I can teach, and that's, that's part of our job as music educators, is I can teach a student how to play every instrument or their chosen instrument, mm -hmm. um, but I'm far from being an expert gotcha. on most of them. Who was your biggest influence uh, to become a teacher? I would have to say my mom and her sisters that are all educators. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was an educator for a little bit. Um, I had an aunt that just recently retired as, as a uh, educator, elementary, excuse me, mm -hmm. elementary school teacher over in Broward County. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had several influences there. Mm -hmm. Um, but then once I got to high school, it was my high school band director. Call his name or her. Um, Jeffrey Ayers. Just for history's purposes. Uh, no problem. Yeah, Mr. Jeff Ayers. Mm -hmm. uh, he, was, he was my high school director. Uh, he just retired um, from a middle school in Michigan mm -hmm. a few years back. What has been your um, um, biggest, your highest achievement so far that you're most proud of? Sitting right here in front of me, uh, being a Golden Apple recipient is by far mm -hmm. uh, the, the biggest uh, accomplishment as an educator that I've, I've received so far. Mm -hmm. You mentioned one of the myths about being a music educator. Was any other myths 
biggest myth? Um, aside from uh, having that, you can play all instruments. That, that we can play yeah, all the instruments. That? Yeah. Um, when that is easy, um, it is not easy. Um, we do more than just teach music, um, especially at the high school level. We see our students probably more than any other teacher, okay. um, and a lot of times more than their parents. Uh, so we have to play the part of counselor, sometimes parent, um, degree planner when, when they're mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to take a music class for four years and still graduate with everything. Uh, we, we wear many hats. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of time goes into it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I spend more time probably in my band room than I do in my own mm -hmm. house. So uh, it, can, it can be a tough job. The high school performing arts program, what do people think it is and what is it actually really is? <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the biggest things, especially uh, being a brand new school, um, a lot of my students came through middle school but didn't know anything about high school. Um, Gateway High School is the only high school that they've been to, only high school they've known, so that band experience or orchestra experience has been the only thing that they've known. So a lot of the parents, especially, um, still have the middle school mindset of what a music program should be, and we operate a little a little differently. Um, our performances are always after school okay. um, in the evenings. Um, when you're dealing with a marching band, of course, uh, you know, in the fall, Friday nights are occupied. Uh, there are times when the student won't get home till 11 o'clock midnight if they're if we're going to an away game. Um, just probably the time commitment is probably the biggest thing. It's not the same mm -hmm. as it would be at the uh, middle school level. It's a lot more competitive um, when you're dealing with uh, honor bands and stuff like that. Um, and at the same time too, you're, you're having to make sure that these students are ready for after high school, mm -hmm. whether it be career, whether it be college, um, the things that they learn through a music program prepares them for that. And I, just, I, I don't think that a lot of times that parents are, are really ready for that or, or truly understand why being in a music program is so important to a student's high school experience. I'm glad you mentioned that because my sister played clarinet in high school. Okay. She doesn't touch the clarinet right now. She's an outstanding <clears throat> computer programmer and math expert yeah. in logic and all those kind of things and I went to a high school Carver High School in Birmingham they had yeah. one of the mm -hmm. top music uh, band marching bands absolutely and just a high school fam you fall practical right purposes. right and our band was just the toast of the school the toast of the community all that pride and I never thought about after you finish planning your school how do you turn that into a career but some of the things that you just mentioned, whether you go on to be a music teacher or anything like that, or play in a band afterwards, those skills that you learned translates to a lot of other fields in terms of the logic and the progression of music and the discipline mm -hmm. and all of that. Can you expand on that a, a bit, if you would? Certainly. First of all, um, we don't teach students to necessarily become musicians later on. Okay. That is, that is a choice that they make, and if that's the direction they want to go in, yes, absolutely we'll support them and, and push them in that direction, uh, give them every tool that they need to be successful at the collegiate level. But our main concern is making sure that our students are successful. Um, things that they learn as far as being in a music program, things like working well with others, uh, being part of a team, uh, dedicating yourself to something bigger than yourself. Being around different types of people. Um, all those things you're, you're gonna have to know later on in life as you become an adult because you're gonna be doing those exact same things. Am I off base because I recall in high school, particularly I keep thinking about high school, mm -hmm. that the students who were in the band seemed to also be top students in other subjects 
Is there a correlation between that? Absolutely there is. Um, there have been studies done. Uh, the statistics are out there. Your band students, or and I, and I say band because that's what I mostly teach, but generally Music. any any student that is involved in the fine arts are usually going to be at the top of their class. Uh, they score higher on standardized tests. They score stand, uh, higher on college entrance exams. I mean, it's it's just a proven fact that if your if your student is involved in a fine arts program all the way through high school, mm -hmm. they're they're going to be more academically successful. Now, I'm not saying that they're gonna they're gonna graduate with you know a, an above a 4.0 GPA. A lot of them do, um, but they're going to be better adjusted when they go off to college or they enter the career field. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, they're going to they're have those higher scores on the standardized test and on those college entrance exams. And that's just simply because they're more uh, socially rich mm -hmm. because of what they have to do as, as uh, fine arts students. If you were making a pitch to somebody to attend Gateway High School, what would be your your high points? Um, I would uh, talk to the student about their goals academically um, because first and foremost if you're, go if you're gonna be, and, and I kinda pride myself on this, if you're gonna be involved in any of my music programs you have to get good grades elsewhere. Um, it's not just about showing up and playing in the ensemble, you need to go to your other classes too. Um, so if, if you're looking, if I was telling this to a parent, I would say if you want your child, if you want your student to be successful academically, if you want your student to be more well-rounded by the time they receive their high school diploma, if you want your student to have the opportunity to have a bunch of different choices as far as which direction they want to go in. Mm -hmm. There is no better school in Lee County mm. than Gateway High School. We, we have what you're looking for, and we have the educators there, we have the administration there to make sure that everyone is successful. Couldn't have said it better myself. Lewis Fisher, 2003, 2023, Golden Apple Earner for the Lee County School District, music educator at Gateway High School. Thanks for joining us on Lee Pitch Live. Thank you so much. Remember, for those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like Mr. Fisher. And Miami has the oranges, but Gateway High School has got the juice. It's got the juice. We'll see you. Lee Pitts Live is a Lee Pitts Enterprise production. Hello, everybody. This is Lee. I'm so glad that you watched that particular show. And if you enjoyed that show, we got other shows like that. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch Lee Pitts Live on demand anytime. And also hit us up on all our social media platforms. Just type in Lee Pitts Live and there you go.